Welcome to A Fresh Start with Dr. Bobby Mullins, Executive Director of A Fresh Start Ministries. At some time, we all need a fresh start. And each week on A Fresh Start TV program, you'll hear a relevant message straight from the Bible, providing examples and principles to show us how to start over again. Join us now for this edition of A Fresh Start as Dr. Mullins proclaims from the Word of God how to live the abundant life Jesus desires for all of us to experience. Sometimes my heart is filled with doubt but I know my father is working it out there are times in this battle my heart's torn in two still I have assurance that he'll see me through he'll see me through there's nothing that Jesus can't do he watches the fall of the sparrow and I know he watches me too. He'll see me through. There's nothing that he cannot do. When I've done all I can when I've come to the end he'll see me through sometimes the night can be so long and it seems in the darkness that all hope is gone. Then a voice gently whispers, my child, do not fear, for lo, I am with you. I'll always be near, and he There's nothing that Jesus can't do. He watches the fall of the sparrow. And I know he watches you too. He There's nothing that Jesus can't do. When you've done all you can and you've come to the end, He'll see you through. He Cast all your cares upon Jesus because he cares for you. Well, I want to welcome you to a fresh start.
television program. And each week as we bring special music, we're just trying to sing some songs that talk about having a fresh start in life. And I know there have been plenty of times in my life that I've had to start over and I've had to learn to go on and seek to do what it is that God would have me to do. And there's sometimes I've just had to learn to completely trust in Him knowing that the Lord would see me through. But tonight, I want to do something that it's going to take a couple of weeks. I'm going to preach uh, on the passage that is my favorite passage to preach on. And usually when I go to a church, uh, if you're in a conference, you usually get 30 minutes scheduled. And it's one of those that I, I don't like to have to rush through it, and I have to sometimes. So in just a moment, I'm going to begin this message, and I'm going to take my time, and then I'll finish it up next week, and I won't have to rush through it. But as you know, here at uh, Fresh Start TV program, Fresh Start Ministries is a faith ministry, and we're dependent upon the donations of those who give to support our ministry. So if you could uh, give to a Fresh Start Ministries, we would certainly appreciate it. By the way, if you have an email address and you would like to get our quarterly to bi-monthly update about our ministry and some of the things that are going on, if you would send me your email to my email address, brobmullins at aol.com, and you would let me know you'd like to get the newsletter, I'll send that to you. Because in the April newsletter, I tell about three different ways or levels of giving to our ministry. We have what we call the Gideon's 300 Givers, that when I first began the program, I preached on the life of Gideon. And how with 300 men, he was able to defeat an army that it said their camels were as the sand on the seashore, and it, it was countless trying to count all the troops that they were up against. And so the picture there was little as much when God is in it. And so we're not a major ministry at this time. I have a big vision for our ministry, but you start it and you take it one step at a time. And right now, if you could be a Gideon's 300 giver, uh, that's people we're asking if you could give a $300 contribution here in the first uh, year of our ministry. We're looking for 300 people to do that. You can do the math. That would give us a pretty good foundation on beginning the ministry. And we've already had several uh, couples or individuals who have done that. Then we have what I call the hundred-fold blessing benefactors. There was a couple that we knew in our previous church, and they had three daughters, and their girls were, were about the same age as my son and two daughters. They had two in college at the same time we had two in college. They've got one married. We've got one married. Their two oldest kids are out of college, still have one in college. We have one in college. You know, just so many similar things. Uh, they were not wealthy people. I mean, God, you know, took care of the needs in their life. But uh, after I got the ministry started, they sent me a $100 check. And they said, we believe in what you're doing with the Fresh Start Ministries. And as long as we're able, we want to give you $100 a month for your ministry. So I'm praying that the Lord would raise up a hundred, uh, hundredfold blessing benefactors who could give $100 a month to our ministry, a hundred people. Is that attainable? Well, we've already had uh, close to 10 to 15 who've been able to do that and if we could have people, have that many who could give that generously, then our ministry would be on solid ground. But everyone who gives to the ministry is a difference maker donor, is how I call it. I shared on a recent program about a cousin of mine in Arkansas who keeps up with uh, our program, is able to view it when uh, she'll look at the program as it's airing on WVLR on their website. She can go to my website. Uh, www.drbobbymullins.com and we have some of the previously aired programs on it and she gave $25 well I shared that I'm a one person office I don't receive a salary for what I do but $25 can go a long way in buying stamps stationery uh, doing some of the things like that and when you put that together with others who are given that it adds up so any gift that you could give to a Fresh Start Ministries we would certainly appreciate it you can donate by going to a Fresh Start Ministries, P.O. Box 32486, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37930. Or you can go to my website and click on the donations link. Now let me share with you, if you give online that way, 
uh, there is a fee that is charged by the service we use to have that done. So you, you have to deduct that from uh, the amount of money that then could be considered for tax purposes. But it's a small fee and several folks have chosen to go that route. And if that's how you prefer, we would certainly uh, be appreciative for you to do it that way. Now, most people know the verse that I'm going to speak on tonight. Many know the verse that's prior to it, but two of the most well-known verses in the Bible are Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He, God, shall direct your paths. In 1985, I probably heard the greatest sermon that per, to me personally. I've heard the greatest preachers in our country. I've been able to go to conferences where they are, hear them live. I hear them on television, and there are great preachers. But to me personally, in this, you know, you'll have something like this that can happen to you. There'll be a sermon that just gets a hold of your life and changes you. And I pray that I've preached a few of those through the years. I pray God will give me some sermons like that in the years ahead. But I heard Dr. Jack Howells on a cassette of the sermon preach on Proverbs 3, 6, 6 back in 1985, it changed my life. It changed my attitude and concept of ministry. I was a, a minister of youth at the time. And when my wife heard that tape, she said, Bobby, you need to preach a sermon on that. And we made Proverbs 3, 6 our family life first. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So I want to give Dr. Howes the credit for for giving me the inspiration. His sermon was over an hour long. And if he had an outline, I couldn't find it. He was all over the place and using illustrations about Proverbs 3, 6. But folks, it was a powerful sermon. Now, if my daughter was here, my wife, I'm going to give the intro to the message about the way that I usually give it. I've preached this message 30 or 40 times through the years. They could pretty much give the intro that I give, but I, I want to make a point through the intro, and so I'm going to start out sharing that with you. But on any given Sunday, in any given congregation, anywhere you go, at least 60% of the people are wrestling or struggling with an issue or, or problem of some kind for which they have no answer. They can't see the end. And maybe you have been beset by problems in the last few weeks or months. You've been blue. You've been melancholy. You've been disappointed. You've been disillusioned. You've been disenchanted. You've been dismayed. You've been disturbed. You've been disappointed. And any other D words I could think of in that regards, maybe that could apply to your life right now. But I want to tell you this. There is a difference between problems be setting you and problems be getting you. Proverbs 3, 6 is one of the great truths of the Christian life. And on tonight's broadcast and next week's broadcast, we're just going to go all the way through this verse. We're going to go over and over again and just apply it to many of the situations in life. Now, one of the things that I like to do when I meditate on a verse, I like to put it to music. The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Sometimes you can put it to the tune of something, you know, I've heard someone use uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 by the merry, merry month of May. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Well, when I heard Dr. Howes preach on this verse, he did the same thing. And he said that one day he was walking through an airport and he began to quote Proverbs 3, 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And he said that as he began to walk faster and pick up his cadence, it was almost like, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And he said in just a moment he began to sing a tune. He doesn't know where he got it, but it goes like this. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge him, 
and he shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge him. In all thy ways acknowledge him. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Well, get ready. You're going to hear that more than once on this program tonight and next week. It kind of sounds like Born on a Mountaintop in Tennessee, but it's a catchy little tune. And I find that just singing a tune like that can really help me to learn a verse. But one of the things that I want you to see tonight in Proverbs 3, 6, it is one of those verses in the Bible that applies to every Christian. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and God, he shall direct your path. You see, that's God's will for every life. And we talked about a moment ago, people are unhappy. They're blue, they're melancholy. They're even people want to end their lives. They're people who are disappointed and, and they just don't understand what's going on. Well, I want to tell you the root for your problem, which is calling you unhappiness. I believe Proverbs 3, 6 is the answer to many of the problems we have, and it's this. The reason for your problems right now for the most part, is not doing God's will. Now, what is God's will for every life? Well, we just said it's to acknowledge Him, and then it is to abide on your side of Proverbs 3, 6. Let me illustrate it this way. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. Six words, and He shall direct thy path. Six words. Those first six words are for you and me. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. We are to acknowledge God, and the next six words are for God. And he shall direct thy paths. That's God's job. You see, we're to have our side of the verse. In all thy ways acknowledge him. God has his side of the verse and he shall direct thy path. But so often the problem is this, folks. We get over on God's side of Proverbs 3, 6 and we start trying to direct our own paths. It is not God's job to acknowledge it himself. It's his job to direct our paths. It is not our job to direct our paths. It is our job to acknowledge him. When I grew up in Memphis, about the only place in the neighborhoods where we lived where you had a fence was in the back of your yard to separate you from your neighbor. We didn't have them coming down the side of the house or in the front or whatever. and Not many people had completely fenced in backyards. But everybody had a hedge, and that was kind of your way to have some privacy. And I remember growing up, we had one on one side, but we shared a driveway with another neighbor. And, boy, we were some of the first folks to ever have a paved driveway. But we had that hedge on the other side. At one time, it was even in the front of the house. Well, I tell you, it used to take a lot of time to trim those hedges. But one of the things was this. We had our side of the hedge, and our neighbor had his side of the hedge. And we used to have to work it out that we both trimmed the hedge on the same day. Because if we trimmed our side of the hedge and they didn't trim theirs, it didn't look good. It would look like somebody with one half of their head shaved and another with their hair spiked. And, and some people may wear it that way today, but as far as the hedge, that didn't look good. We have to do it at the same time. So you see, the reason for our problems is not doing God's will. God's will for every life is to acknowledge Him and then to abide on our side of Proverbs 3, 6. But the problem is we get over on the God side of the hedge and that's why we're not happy. Now, you also notice, and we'll come back to that in just a minute, but also our job is to acknowledge Him. Now, how do we acknowledge Him? Well, one of the things that I like to do when I meditate upon a verse, I do like to go back sometimes and I like to paraphrase the verse. And here are some of the ways that I have paraphrased Proverbs 3, 6. The way to success is His. The materials for success are ours. See, in all thy ways acknowledge Him. The materials for success, success are ours. The way to success is His. He'll direct our path. Then, you be what you're supposed to be. You acknowledge Him, and He will take you where you're supposed to go. He'll direct your paths. The what of the will of God is yours. The where of the will of God is His. I heard somebody uh, say one time, I'd rather be doing the right what of the will of God in the wrong where than to be doing the wrong what of the will of God the right where. I think I know what they mean by that. But see, that's the picture. The what of the will of God is yours. Acknowledge Him. The where of the will of God is His. He'll direct your path. Then, in everything you do, put God first. 
and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Another paraphrase is this. Obey God no matter what you're facing and leave all the circumstances to him. And by the way, I got that from Dr. Charles Stanley. In 1986, I'd only heard this verse a year before we had made it our family life verse. I'd developed a sermon on it. I had a good job as a youth minister, making a probably as high a salary as you could as a youth minister. Things were going pretty good for us when I felt like God called me to preach. And I felt that God told me in my spirit, He said, Bobby, I want you to resign your church, and I want you to go to seminary and take all the courses for training for preaching and pastoring a church. Well, up to that point, whenever I'd made a move in ministry, I'd always gone from one church to the next, and you know, God would usually put me in a little bit bigger church, and each time that's the way it would happen. But I resigned that church without anywhere to go. I want to tell you, the people there were so gracious to me. They gave me a love offering that helped me to live for a month or two as I got started in seminary full time. But it was just like the Lord said, Bobby, you preach on Proverbs 3, 6. Do you really trust me that much? That if I tell you, you do this, you'll obey me. So I did obey God and, you know, the Lord worked out things. I had a little bit of a retirement account. I, can't, I was able to uh, use it for several months and then my home church put me on as uh, director of singles and then I became minister of singles. But I tell you, we learn to live by faith and we're learning to live by faith all over again as far as God's provision for our life. But God will test us at times. God knows how we're going to react. He tests us so we can see really what kind of faith we have. Well, we went to a conference that someone paid for us to go to right about the time I was going to resign my church and then I was going to go full-time to seminary. And Dr. Charles Stanley was one of the two main speakers. Uh, both speakers spoke twice on a Friday night and twice on Saturday. And I remember Dr. Stanley, when it became his time on that Saturday morning, there were about 300 of us there. Dr. Stanley said, you know, last night I began to pray about it and God just put it upon my heart not to preach to you today. I just want to share from you out of my heart and I want to share with you from Proverbs 3, 6. Well, I want to tell you something. I don't know how that affected the other people there, but Wanda and I knew God was using Dr. Stanley to speak to us in a special way. And so these were his paraphrases of Proverbs 3, 6. I already read one. Obey God no matter what you're facing and leave all the circumstances to him. Charles Stanley said that his grandfather told him one time, he said, Son, if God tells you to run at that brick wall, you put your head down and you go full speed, and if it's God's will for you to do that, he'll open up a way through the wall. Now, I'm thankful God's never told me to do that, but that's pretty strong faith. Then another verse was this. When you have a, a paraphrase, when you have a need, God knows it. And if you will wait on God, he will supply your need. And then the other one is this. Obey God and trust God, and He will see you through that thing you fear the most. You know, there are a lot of things that we fear in life, but you want to know what I was fearing back in 1986? Resigning a position with no guaranteed income. Well, that was 20-something years ago, and God's gotten us to this point. At 24, 25 years later, God's seen us through. So, the reason for your problems is not doing God's will. God's will for every life is to acknowledge Him and then to abide or to remain on your side of Proverbs 3, 6. What's the root of those problems that cause you to be unhappy? Well, we already talked about it before, but it's going over onto God's side of Proverbs 3, 6 and directing your own paths. People are not happy because their expectations are not fulfilled. People will fail you, but Jesus will never fail you. And what happens when we quit acknowledging God and we get over on God's side of the hedge, we get in the directing business, we get in the planning business, and we're doing what God is supposed to do for us, and we're out of the will of God. And when we do that, friends, we're not doing what God wants us to do. You see... If you've gotten over on the God side of Proverbs 3, 6, you've stopped doing some of the things you used to do. People will quit the choir. Who You sing in the choir. They'll drop out of some area of the church, things that they used to do because you're not doing what you're supposed to do, which is to acknowledge Him. And then let God 
take you where you're supposed to go and do what you're supposed to do. So you need to get out of the planning business. You need to get out of the dreaming business and get back into the reality business of acknowledging Him. You see, my job, what I'm to do in acknowledging Him is to spend time with Him, to share Him, to point others to Him, to praise Him, to preach Him, to teach Him, to thank Him, to adore Him, to exalt Him, to honor Him, to know Him, to obey Him, to love Him, to glorify Him, to magnify Him, to sing for Him. Those are just the ways in which we are to acknowledge God. Now what's the result of getting out of God's will and doing it my way instead of God's way? By getting over on the God side of Proverbs 3, 6. The result is this. Being out of God's will. And being out of God's will equals unhappiness. Now, I, I want to tell you, this is a goal I set years ago, that wherever God uses me in the ministry, this is going to be my one goal. My happiness is not dependent on the size of the crowd, the reaction of the crowd, or the response of the crowd. My happiness is this. You see, I know this. Wherever I go, if I'm preaching to 1,000 people or 50 people or less, I know this. The Bible is just as true. The Holy Spirit is just as real. Jesus is just as much my Lord and Savior, and I'm just as much saved. You see, no one ought to plan their life on dreams that others have to fulfill. Friends, we need to do it God's way. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, in all thy ways acknowledge him. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. We've talked about God's will for every life. Is to uh, stay on God's side of Proverbs 3, 6. The reason for your problems not doing God's will. By getting over on the God's side of Proverbs 3, 6. And then your side of Proverbs 3, 6. Or your side of the heads gets grown up and out of shape. The result is being out of God's will because of a dependence on others for happiness and dreams that are unrealistic. Friends, when we come back together next week, I want to give you the positive side of this sermon. I want to be able to share with you the right way to live your life. Oh, you're unhappy because you're not doing God's will. But the right way to live your life is to do it God's way. And I'm going to be able to share with you next week just those basic steps that we can take in our life that we can acknowledge Him in everything that we do. And maybe in your life right now what you simply need is a fresh start. My friends, I can't think of a better verse in the Bible to build your life upon in Proverbs 3, 6. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. my truth will set you For he's the truth, the life, the way And if you'll believe